All right, what's up, everyone? I had the realization that there are a lot of people who use Vim and use it well, but they've never learned how to do macros, or they've never learned that functionality. And they're really great. People should use them. Um, so in this video, I'm just going to show you how to use them, basically. Uh, and they're very, you know, you can do crazy stuff with them. Uh, but anyway, in a previous video, I told you how to map in your VimRC different key presses to different mappings. And recording macros is sort of similar. Um, in that you're recording key presses, but you can actually do it real time in Vim. Um, so it's pretty nice. So here's what I'm going to do in this video. Um, I have this, here's my wallpaper folder, or specifically my landscape folder. And what I want to do is I want to take all these files and feed them into FFmpeg uh, to make a slideshow automatically. Uh, but that's not the important part. The important part for us here is we have to take all the file names and put them in a, uh, a particular syntax in a file to feed it to FFmpeg. Uh, so what that's going to look like, well first off, uh, I'm going to take, if I take ls, I'm going to feed it to, uh, let's say a file name, you know, file list, okay? And I'm going to open that file list up. So this is a file in Vim, it has all of the uh, files in this folder. And here's what I want to do uh, to make, to be able to feed it to FFmpeg. I have to turn it into a particular syntax and it's going to look something like this. Uh, you have to have file, open a quote, and then quotation marks basically go around the file name. Uh, then below it you have duration, and then some duration, let's say five, and that just means five seconds. Let me, this is a little distracting for now. Um, so basically we are going to want to put every single file name here uh, in uh, the kind of, this kind of syntax where we have, um, you know, file, then quotations, then duration. Uh, so if you are just, um, you know, if you're using Notepad or something, I mean, obviously that's a very difficult thing to do. We have 179 uh, files here. How are we going to go through them all? How are we going to uh, work this out? Um, well, basically what we're going to do is we are going to record a macro to do it. Now, how do we do that? Macros are super easy. First, I'm going to put my cursor wherever I want to start. Uh, and I'm going to have it right in the first line, first character here. Now to record a macro, what you're going to do is press Q. Uh, then you press another key, and that key is going to be where your macro is saved. I'm going to press W for wallpaper, just because, you know, why not? Um, so now you'll notice it's saying recording at W. That means you're recording your macro, that's good. Now here's the idea behind macros. Um, Every single key press you press from now on until you press Q again in normal mode is going to be recorded in this macro. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to run a, record a macro that uh, puts this puts one line in the correct syntax. Then I'm going to repeat it a gajillion times for all the other ones. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first I'm going to press capital I. Capital I goes to the beginning of the line and puts me in insert mode. Uh, I'm already at the beginning of the line, but I just want to be careful. Uh, I'm going to type file, uh, space, and open our quotes. Now I press escape to get in normal mode. Now instead of keying over with L or something like that, uh, I'm going to press capital A, so that moves me to the end. Now the reason I do that instead of keying over is that if we have a file name here with a different length, uh, then the appropriate number of key presses will be different. But if we press capital A, we'll always be at the end. So press capital A, now quote. Now I'm going to press enter, and I'm going to type duration, and I'll say five. Uh, and so that's all the stuff we have to write, but I also want to have the cursor end up where we started, that is at the beginning of the next file name. So I'm going to press escape, or to get back in normal mode, J to go down, and then uh, zero to get back to, to the beginning of the line. Now our macro is totally done. Of course, it still says recording at W. To finish the macro totally, just press Q. Now all of those key presses are saved to at w. Now in order to call that macro, all you have to do is press at, capital 2, and w. Um, so at w gives you this. It just repeated exactly the key presses you had before. Uh, so at w, at w. Very nice. Uh, now if you record multiple macros, uh, a shortcut to get to your last macro pressed is just at at. So if you just press add add, it just repeats whatever you did last. Um, now these macros can be called uh, iteratively. So let's say I want to do that 50 times. I just press 
five zero, and then at w. Now it's repeated 50 times, I've gone through 50 more of the file names. Or we can do it 100 more times, at w. Bam, here we are. Now you might wonder, um, if we go all the way to the bottom, so we have a couple more file names. Um, you might wonder, let's say I press this, like, let's say I press 100 and then at at. Is it going to get to the very end and then continue to press it until it gets to 100? Uh, and the answer is no. Vim is actually pretty smart in terms of uh, when it's going to, uh, you know, stop running recursive macros. Uh, so even if I, you know, I only have what, like 20 of these left, if I press 2000 and then at at, it's actually just going to stop once it gets to the very bottom. So it's not going to continue doing the macro over and over again. So it's actually pretty smart about that. Um, so anyway, that's, that's basically it. That's how you record macros. And the other thing about them is that if you leave Vim and come back into your file, you can actually uh, press it, the macro will still be recorded. So you can have a couple of these just saved, uh, you know, that you need on the fly. But anyway, basically what we've done in this video is we've taken, you know, a, a, a list of files and we've converted it into the syntax we want, really only writing it once and then repeating the macro. So that's the beauty of them. And these are the kind of things you can implement really quickly and they're very useful. So anyway, hope you learned something. See you next time.